Hello everyone, Heather Hames speaking to you again from the Division of Emergency Medicine Point of Care Ultrasound Program at Western University. Welcome to this installment of our practical point of care ultrasound series. In this screencast, we are once again going to focus on the abdominal component of the FAST exam. The previous screencast in this series reviewed scanning technique, image interpretation, and proper archiving of your studies. If you haven't watched it, be sure to check it out. This time, we will focus on the clinical applications of the FAST exam, highlighting some important pearls to know and pitfalls to avoid in your real-time bedside interpretation of this important exam. So let's jump right in. When a patient presents with blunt or penetrating trauma or unexplained hypotension and a potential injury to the abdomen, we really have four possible options to evaluate their injuries. Diagnostic peritoneal lavage, or DPL, CT scanning, ultrasound, or operative exploration. Although rarely performed these days, DPL was once the standard for evaluating for intra-abdominal hemorrhage in the unstable trauma patient. Advantages of DPL are that it can be done at the bedside. It doesn't require transport out of the ED. In experienced hands, the procedure can be done relatively quickly and has a high sensitivity. Its disadvantages are that it is invasive, there is the potential for an atrogenic injury, and many new trainees and doctors are unfamiliar with the technique as they have never seen or done this procedure. CT scanning is excellent for identifying a high percentage of interabdominal injuries. It evaluates the retroperitoneum and solid organs, and it is non-invasive. Unfortunately, it is relatively expensive, time-consuming, exposes the patient to radiation and contrast agents, and most importantly, requires the patient to leave the relatively safe monitoring environment of the ED. This is ill-advised when managing an unstable patient. Operative exploration is very sensitive and specific. It allows not only a diagnosis, but also treatment of injuries. However, it is very invasive and carries with it the inherent operative and anesthetic risks. In smaller centers, an operative approach may not be immediately available. Ultrasound, and specifically your focus point of care ultrasound evaluation in trauma, is very fast, sensitive, is done at the bedside, and does not require transport out of the ED. You know the advantages, and chances are if you've spent any time in an emergency department lately, you have seen it in action. But in order to use it safely, we'll need to look at some of the limitations. The key to being safe when employing the use of any medical test or exam is to know when it does not apply. The information obtained from the FAST exam is potentially a game changer, but you need to understand what it can and can't tell you. To start with, the FAST exam only evaluates for free fluid within the peritoneal cavity. It does not evaluate the solid organs, bowel, or diaphragm. Instead, it is a test for the presence of intra-abdominal hemorrhage resulting from injuries to these structures. As we saw in the previous slide, the confirmation or ruling out of specific injuries requires another test, most often a CT scan or an exploration by a surgeon. It is also important to realize that about 200 cc's is needed to begin to obtain a positive FAST. Some traumatic injuries that may be very clinically relevant, such as a bowel perforation or a diaphragmatic rupture, do not produce a lot of bleeding, and if they occur in isolation, they may present with a negative FAST exam. As you recall from the previous screencast, there are three possible outcomes for the FAST exam. Positive, if free fluid is seen. Negative, if all views are adequately seen and no free fluid is present. Or indeterminate. An indeterminate scan is one in which no call can be made and you must proceed with your management of the patient as if the scan was not done. If one cannot adequately see one or more of the three required views of the FAST exam, the scan is indeterminate. Obesity, significant bowel gas, or subcutaneous air can make images more difficult to obtain and therefore increase the chances of an indeterminate scan. Let's explore potential false negatives with the FAST exam. This is a dangerous scenario when the scan is declared determinate, meaning you've seen enough to make a call, and negative, meaning the call is no free fluid, when there is in fact free fluid present. This may lead to serious consequences for your patients. The goal for the safe practice of bedside ultrasound and trauma is to eliminate false negative results. A false negative result can occur in one of two broad categories. The first is where the ultrasound images are correctly interpreted as negative, but for clinical reasons, the bedside ultrasound may simply not be reliable enough to exclude free fluid. The second 
occurs when the ultrasound image does in fact show free fluid, but the image is interpreted by the practitioner incorrectly as being negative. Let's take a look at some clinical scenarios where the FAST exam itself may not be completely reliable first. You may remember this slide from the previous screencast in this series. When blood is introduced to the peritoneal cavity, it accumulates in the most dependent areas and that is where we look for it. If there is a very small amount of bleeding or if it is very early after the bleeding has started, there may not be enough blood yet accumulated and the initial FAST may be negative. In the resuscitation of an unstable trauma patient, if the initial FAST is negative, it is typically repeated several times in order to avoid this potential pitfall. Similarly, placing the patient in Trendelenburg positioning will increase the fluid accumulation in the upper quadrants and will make a smaller or earlier bleed more easily seen. You may also recall that normally free fluid in the peritoneal cavity will flow in the dependent portions of the abdomen in the relatively unobstructed right and left pericolic gutters, roughly outlined here. Abdominal adhesions from pre previous surgeries or infections may obstruct or reroute the flow of free fluid, therefore causing it to accumulate in an atypical place or in a loculated manner. Be very cautious interpreting a negative FAST exam in a patient with multiple abdominal scars. A positive study is still a positive and should be acted on, but in the presence of midline scars, the absence of visualized free fluid can only be interpreted as indeterminate at best. So let's now turn our attention to the second category of false negatives, errors in image interpretation. We have previously mentioned how early bleeds could be missed by POCUS, owing to the lack of time for fluid to accumulate. Ironically, the opposite end of the time spectrum may also lead to false negatives. As blood pools and clots after time, it may no longer be anechoic, as we expect, but may instead be more of an isoechoic density, and this can be easily overlooked. This image is obviously of a heart, but illustrates the same principle. This patient sustained penetrating trauma to the chest. This was an acute presentation, but some of the blood had already pooled and clotted and instead of appearing anechoic, appears almost hyperechoic. To review, the heart is seen here, the newer free-flowing blood is seen here, and this large hyperechoic area is all representative of clot. Let's have a look at the video again. Clotted or older blood in the abdomen can take on a similar appearance. Here are some more subtle examples of clotted blood in the abdomen. As you can see in these clips, anechoic blood is clearly visible. However, you can begin to appreciate a more isoechoic density to the fluid in the right upper quadrant and in the pelvis. These clips were taken several hours after the patient's acute presentation to the ED and some of the blood had already pooled and clotted and instead of appearing anechoic, appeared almost hyperechoic, most strikingly in the pelvis. Very subtle bleeding may be missed if one is not diligent in performing the FAST exam in a methodical manner. It bears repeating that once the area of interest is identified, your hand is planted and a very slow sweep performed, looking carefully for what may only be a small amount of free fluid. Let's watch again. You can see in the above clip, a quick sweep may have led to a miss in this very subtle positive study. More errors can be made if attention is not focused on clearing all aspects of the abdominal FAST study. We again need to stress the importance of clearing the tips of the solid organs, including the most caudal aspect of the liver and spleen represented here and here, and the subdiaphragmatic space in the left upper quadrant here. This is the area referred to as the six to nine, owing to its position in reference to the hands on a clock. Not adequately assessing and clearing these areas could lead to the dangerous false negative result 
and have serious clinical consequences for your patient. So let's recap some of the potential false negatives you must guard against when performing FAST examinations. First, that there is not enough blood to be detected with point-of-care ultrasound. There may be less than roughly 200 cc's, and therefore free fluid may be missed in your study. Adding the pelvic views will improve your chances of avoiding this error. Adhesions. Adhesions have blocked the free flow of fluid and therefore it is not accumulating where we expect to see it in the three views used in the FAST exam. Thirdly, the blood is clotted and is no longer anechoic. And last, failure to clear the tips, scanning only the interface and missing free fluid around the caudal tip of the liver or the spleen or at the so-called 6 to 9 view of the left upper quadrant. Let's now turn our attention to sources of false positives in the FAST exam. In the setting of trauma, a false positive occurs when your interpretation is positive for free fluid and therefore presumed hemoperitoneum, when in fact there is no blood in the peritoneal cavity. In general, this error is a relatively safe error in that by definition it will presumably lead to consultation or further investigation rather than potentially missing an injury as demonstrated in our false negatives. In rare cases, a false positive in an unstable patient may lead to a laparotomy searching for an abdominal bleed when in fact the source of the patient's instability is something else. Obviously, this may lead to a negative laparotomy and delay to appropriate treatment. As such, it is important to familiarize yourself with sources of false positive studies. Once again, sources of false positives can largely be divided into two categories. Clinical scenarios where the scan is correctly interpreted as positive, but the fluid you are seeing is not blood. And image interpretation scenarios where what you are seeing is not fluid at all, but artifact. Several clinical confounders can lead to a false positive FAST study. The exact nature of free fluid cannot be determined with our ultrasound exam. As such, all of these non-traumatic sources of fluid, ascites, peritoneal dialysate, ruptured ovarian cyst, physiologic fluid in females, and CSF fluid in those with VP shunts are all indistinguishable from blood. There may be information on history, patient presentation, or previous imaging that will identify these patients, but it bears mentioning that in the setting of trauma, the pre-existing presence of an intra-abdominal source of fluid does not rule out a coexisting hemoperitoneum. Unfortunately, there is no way to rule this out by ultrasound. Of course, in trauma scenarios, the fluid found may not be blood, but may still signify important traumatic injuries as in the case of intraperitoneal bladder rupture and spillage of fluid from a bowel injury. So technically, these are false positive for hemoperitoneum, but certainly important to investigate nonetheless. Furthermore, female patients of reproductive age may have a small amount of physiologic fluid in the pelvis. As a general rule, pelvic free fluid is deemed abnormal when it extends more than 50% along the uterine wall in the posterior cul-de-sac or when it is detected anterior to the uterus in the uterovesicular space. Our next sources of false positive stem from errors in image interpretation. Here, we will start with an example where free fluid is present, but it is not in the peritoneal cavity. Although we were properly focused on the hepatorenal interface between the liver and kidney, our eyes may be drawn to the fluid, leading to a momentary lapse where we forget we are no longer looking at our area of interest. Here, fluid is seen in the pleural space and not our abdominal interface. This is clearly demonstrated by seeing its position relative to the diaphragm. In the proper setting, this may be a pleural effusion, empyema, chylothorax, or a hemothorax. This is a still of the left upper quadrant. The kidney is not well seen here. The spleen is seen here, and the diaphragm is seen here. While we are usually only able to obtain the 6 to 9 view of the diaphragm, in this case its bright white echogenic line is seen well where it abuts against the large left pleural effusion. Interestingly, in this case, there is both a pleural effusion and intra-abdominal free fluid seen below the diaphragm here. This next clip represents another potential source of false positives, the double line sign. As you can see in this right upper quadrant sweep, 
there is a subtle anechoic stripe just at the very place we are training our eyes to see anechoic free fluid. The difference here is the dark stripe you are seeing is framed with a bright white line on either side. This is known as the double line sign and represents paranephric fat. One of the bright lines is caused by the outer kidney and one by the outer edge of the perinephric fat. Here is a still image of the double line sign. See how the small anechoic stripe may be confused with free fluid and is encased with white on either side. This is the false positive. True free fluid tracks right along the liver edge and highlights the solid organ on a black background with no white line. You can see here in this example of a true positive. There is a bright echogenic line along the kidney, but along the liver, the fluid directly abuts the liver edge and is not encased with a second white line. Another false positive can be seen with refraction or edge artifact. When the ultrasound beam crosses the boundary of tissues with different propagation speeds at an oblique angle, or when it strikes a curved structure, the beam direction changes and a shadow results. This is the same artifact that can be seen in other areas of point of care ultrasound. Here's an example of edge artifact on an abdominal aorta study. Here is an example of edge artifact in the right upper quadrant. Sometimes the edge artifact can line up very closely with the interface, the very part where we are looking at for an anechoic line. This can be very tricky to distinguish from free fluid. You can see in this example that the artifact is not quite as dark or anechoic as true free fluid, which may be a clue. A second clue is the extension below the diaphragm as is also seen here and would not be seen in this manner with free intraperitoneal fluid. Lastly, a clue may be that this artifact is only seen to line up well with the interface in one view. Scanning in a slightly different plane or from a different rib space may cause artifact to disappear, which would not happen with true free fluid if you are doing complete sweeps. Still, this is an artifact that has fooled many before you and often takes some experience to identify. If you're unsure, it's better to err on the side of caution and obtain another form of imaging to rule out free fluid. One may at times mistake a stomach full of food or fluid for free fluid or abnormal splenic architecture in the left upper quadrant. To avoid this pitfall, ensure that the image plane is not too far anterior or medial so that the stomach does not obscure the left-sided structures. Stomach is often found in the far field in relation to the spleen and anterior and medial to the kidney. Fluid seen in the stomach will be encased by the walls and rugae are often visible. In addition, fluid in the stomach will not track into the crevices surrounding the spleen. So let's review the false positive. The fluid is not blood and is actually ascites, peritoneal dialysate, or several other sources previously reviewed. The fluid is above the diaphragm and is instead a pleural effusion. There is no free fluid and what you are seeing is the double line sign, representative of perinephric fat. You are in fact seeing edge artifact. You are mistaking stomach for free fluid in the left upper quadrant. The following algorithm provides a framework for the clinical use of point of care ultrasound and trauma. As always, there is no replacement for sound clinical judgment. If the scan is positive and the patient is unstable, this is an indication for immediate laparotomy. If the scan is positive and the patient is stable, most patients will go to the CT scanner to better delineate their exact injuries and plan operative management as indicated. If the scan is negative, and the patient is stable, next management steps depend on the clinical presentation and could include observation, repeat point of care ultrasound, or other specific imaging as indicated. If the scan is negative and the patient is unstable, it is important to consider and rule out other causes of hypotension. In these cases, the FAST exam is often repeated. And lastly, if the scan is indeterminate, you have to proceed clinically how you would if no ultrasound was available at all. Alternate imaging, investigation, or operative management may be required depending on the case. 
Thanks for watching this installment of the Point of Care Ultrasound series on the abdominal component of the FAST exam, Pearls, Pitfalls, and Clinical Algorithms. Please check out the other tutorials in this series available at westernsano.ca.